Hello and welcome to a new Cinecola video podcast. This one here is dedicated to the 59th edition of the Cork Film Festival. Now, this was my second year in attendance. Um, and once again, I cannot emphasize enough how enjoyable an experience it was. The vibes are extraordinary and the festival itself just comes across as being ambitious. As far as Irish film festivals are concerned, it's not regarded as big as Dublin, nor does it have a market like the Galway one. But in my opinion, it is by far the most creative, the most vibrant, and possibly the most passionate. You can also see that artistic director James Mulligan and his team have a clear vision, and I can see the festival becoming more and more important in the next few years. Exciting industry events and amazing turnouts uh, from this year have proved the scale of the evolution of the festival right so far, so there is no reason not to get excited about the future of the Cork Film Festival, which next year will reach a landmark 60th edition. So, fingers crossed. Uh, and now, without further ado, here is my top 10 feature films from the festival. Now, same rules as the other top 10s that I compiled apply. This only includes uh, the films that I watched and reviewed on Cinecola.com at this festival. But I can tell you that every film I watched, I was very pleased with. Still, this list is in order of preference, and I do strongly recommend uh, the following titles. So, here we go. Number 10, From Kule to Iona by Donal O'Callaghan, a documentary on the Kule Men's Choir. Founded by legendary Irish composer Sean O'Riada in 1963 and continued on by his son Padder after his death, the narrative structure follows these men as they prepare for a special collaborative performance on the island of Iona. With his work From Kule to Iona, filmmaker Donal O'Callaghan is able to encapsulate the beauty of the landscape of the rural Irish setting, but also the aura of peace, calm and timelessness to create a truly wonderful atmosphere that feels pensive and even philosophical in a way that captures the Celtic and spiritual essence of the simple yet fulfilling life lived by these men and women. Number 9. Charlie's Country by Rolf de Hare Rolf de Hare's new drama, set in the Aboriginal community of Australia, neither overplays the emotional side nor over sentimentalizes their everyday struggle in a cultural context that still naturally seems to discriminate against them. Charlie's Country is a film that is largely driven by its titular character, and we follow his everyday struggles to live with dignity in a setting where white laws endanger his traditions and eventually supports a less fulfilling lifestyle. While the restrictive storyline may unravel with a coldness that could alienate some of its viewers, the structure of the film is effective also because of its iconic leading actor David Goldpill, whose very imposing on-screen presence is enough to carry the film on its shoulders. Number 8, Hide and Seek by Joanna Coates. Joanna Coates depicts Utopia through her story of four young characters, two boys and two girls, living alienated in a countryside house and their close bond developed through love, nakedness and sexuality. Hide and Seek is a film that seems to naturally shift the viewer out of its comfort zone by leaving grey areas in its plot and characters' backgrounds, but also with its sometimes explicitly sexual and bold defiance of certain conventionalities that have walked hand in hand with cinematic portrayals of these particular themes. The admirable cinematography overwhelms the physical nature of the almost entirely improvised performances, while Coates herself, through this film, seems to rediscover feelings of humanism that recall a riveting mix of classic literature figures such as D.H. Lawrence, as well as the cinema of the sexual revolution of the 60s. Number 7, Dummy Jim by Matt Hulse. Matt Hulse tells a little-known story about a deaf-mute long-distance cyclist and the journal he compiled about how he accidentally cycled his way from Scotland to the Arctic Circle. An inspiring tale channeled playfully and creatively by the filmmaker who builds the film as a sensorial experience accentuated by its careful use of sound and vision down to its particulars. With its exciting and colourful imagery compiled by shots taken with different film stocks or digital cameras, spanning from poetic representations to narrative reenactments, this is a film full of meaning that is also sensible to the deaf-mute community with its attention to detail, such as, for instance, the use of fonts for subtitles. Dummy Jim can also be admired for its creative post-production process and editing which not only intensifies the sensory journey but also channels the tradition of documentary filmmaking represented by Zika Vertov's The Man with the Movie Camera. Number 6, Detonator by Keir Pollitt and Damon Maolucci. 
A family man on the verge of burning bridges with his past as a Philadelphia punk rocker is forced to reluctantly revisit those days when out of the blue comes his former bandmate and gets him in big trouble. Detonator is a journey into the night that allows its drama, comedy and thriller elements to influence the narrative through a natural and well-balanced pace as well as excellent character development and in particular interactions between its leading characters with radically opposed personalities portrayed perfectly by Lawrence Michael Levine and Benjamin Ellis Fine. In the end, it is also a fascinating and real exploration of its setting of Philadelphia with its punk culture, but one that never plays out too aggressively or loudly, thus fulfilling a reflective approach on its studies of man's struggles with impending maturity and coming of age. Number 5, Cherry Pie by Lawrence Mertz. An exciting experimentation by cinematographer Lawrence Mertz, who set off on a journey with an actress and let the story develop naturally. On paper, Cherry Pie is a film about a woman running away and evolving as her journey progresses. However, the stunning beauty of the impulsive imagery seeks audience interaction that goes beyond the usual cinematic format of narrative indoctrination. Thus, the fulfilling collective experience of watching this film is one that also depends on an individual's perception of the events that occur on screen, some of which are abstract, if not purposely downright nonsensical. Finally, the piece also works because of the dedicated and enigmatic performance of Lolita Chama, who is virtually in every shot of the film, often in close-up, and seems to conceal enough mystery to keep the viewer willing to be taken by the journey, engaged and hypnotised. Number 4, 1971 by Joanna Hamilton. The story of how a group of activists stole documents out of an FBI office and exposed their illegal surveillance program, a program overseen and supported by the controversial figure of J. Edgar Hoover. Despite Joanna Hamilton retaining a feeling of the atmosphere of the times in which this story is told, 1971 feels terribly modern, especially in today's world of Occupy movements and WikiLeaks. To add to the prestige of the project is the fact that she gets to meet these Robin Hood figures for the first time ever. On top of that, the film is very entertaining with its effective use of reenactments that reveal the behind the scenes workings of the deed and an approach that comes close to fictional filmmaking. Number 3, Darkness on the Edge of Town by Patrick Ryan. Unusual for Irish cinema, but for this reason all the more invigorating. Darkness on the Edge of Town is an ambitious and bold modern western set in Kerry that even dares to define genre convention by credibly having teenage girls in the leading tough and rough roles. Parts carried on with credibility by the respective actresses. The story is that of a young teenage sharpshooter who longs to avenge the killing of her strange sister. Little does she know, unlike the viewer, that the perpetrator of this unholy deed is none other than her best and only friend. Impressive visuals often styled and shaped by Asian cinema influences, this is also quite a remarkable feature debut by Patrick Ryan, executed with confidence and shaped by underlying psychological noir which, to his credit, was made with a micro-budget. Number 2, Triptych by Robert Lepage and Pedro Pires. Despite the title, which refers to a particularly common narrative structure, Triptych by Lepage and Pires is far from being conventional. The story revolves around three characters, a woman struggling with mental illness, her sister, who is about to undergo delicate brain surgery, and her surgeon, who has an unhealthy drinking habit he claims is the only thing that will stop his hand from shaking. Unhappiness, love, present, past, beauty, culture, humanity and religion are only some of the themes that intertwine artfully and creatively in a film that at once aims to charm and shock the viewer in equal amounts, through a genuine portrayal of its characters, but also with bursts of creativity and intelligence, as well as unusual yet enriching features such as the inclusion of real archive footage, or in a particularly harrowing sequence, footage of real brain surgery. Magnetic from start to finish, this film constantly challenges challenges the viewer and constantly finds new ways to do so whilst keeping a balanced narrative and far from disregarding the importance of its story. Number 1 Patrick's Day by Terry McMahon Following his bombshell debut feature Charlie Casanova, Terry McMahon returns to the big screen with a remarkable film that recalls the works of the likes of Douglas Sirk and John Cassavetes. Patrick's Day is about a young man with schizophrenia discovering love through a random encounter with a suicidal flight attendant. Upon discovering the affair, however, the mother gets in the way and hires a crooked cop to keep them apart. 
The filmmaker handles the heavy theme of mental illness with care and sensibilities, providing perhaps one of the most rewardingly realistic representations of schizophrenia in cinema to date. However, the film neither starts nor ends here, and works perfectly well as a universal coming-of-age drama as well as one that focuses on the right to intimacy. The powerhouse screenplay is flattered by the very real characters, somewhat unembellished in their imperfect natures. They, in turn, are portrayed perfectly by the cast, particularly Kerry Fox in the role of the mother and newcomer Mo Dunford in the role of the central character, a greatly challenging role that required a high level of credibility. Aside from that, one can equally admire the great cinematography and extensive use of close-ups, as well as techniques that often even take the viewer out of their comfort zone and glorify the amazing emotional and psychological psychological depth of the story. So thanks very much for watching. Keep reading Cinecola.com. Keep listening to Fred Film Radio. You will f- be able to find a lot, well, all of my interviews from uh, the Cork Film Festival there with some of the filmmakers and people from the festival. Thanks very much. Thanks again. And so long.